Well, hello, ho, ho, everybody. My name is John Hammond, and Merry Christmas, or Happy Holidays. Whatever it is you're celebrating, it is the holiday season. You know, it's finally that time of year again. You get your friends, your family, everyone together. You get warm and snuggly by the fireplace. You're having your hot chocolate or your eggnog, and all of your loved ones around. You completely ignore them because you're going to be playing some online cybersecurity exercises. So I am super duper excited to help kick off the TriHack Me. Advent of Cyber 2. There is a lot of awesome stuff in store for this game, and this is going to be a great year to help celebrate and enjoy it with. So let's dive into this video, and we're going to get started with the Try Hack Me Advent of Cyber 2. Okay, so before we get started, I want to take a quick second to get everyone on the same page, just in case you don't know what this whole advent of cyber thing is that Try Hack Me's putting on and John keeps talking about. So let me fill you in. Advent of Cyber is a cybersecurity exercise or event that's lasting 25 days. And it starts like right now. We're kicking it off, you and I together. But every single day for the next 25 days, a new beginner friendly, guided, hand holding cybersecurity challenge is unleashed. And you get to work through it, you get to solve it. It's this new task, a new puzzle, a new problem or an activity or an exercise that you can learn from. And that's the whole point. The whole point is to learn something new, expose yourself to new technology, get familiar with something new inside this whole big wide realm of cybersecurity. Maybe it's a field that you're super interested in, you want to break into, or maybe it's something that you'd like to have be your day job someday, or maybe it already is your day job and you want to get better at that thing you do every single day. That's what Advent of Cyber is all about. It's all about having fun, it's all about learning, and it's all about enjoying this holiday spirit, right? Enjoying the holiday season. So this event is completely free. Advent of Cyber exists all online and it's completely free. There are no costs whatsoever to participate and play. So I don't know, have some fun. Tell your friends, get your family on keyboard, do the cool stuff. And if you do play, it's not like a competition, right? It's, it's funny because it's, it's gamified, but it's not a competitive thing with the scoreboard and all the points are like, oh, super serious. It's about having fun. But if you play, if you participate, the more challenges that you solve, the more tasks that you complete, the more raffle tickets you'll get. And if you have all of these raffle tickets, you'll have a chance at winning one of the prizes. And there are a lot of prizes. Like there's over like $13,000 in prizes. It's kind of crazy. Uh, we'll take a look at it in just a second. But if you work through all 25 of these daily security tasks, you'll earn a little certificate of completion. And that's pretty awesome. And hey, just for funsies, there are some special tasks created by myself or the Cyber Mentor, Tiberius and Darkstar, all awesome and incredible folks kind of in the community, except for that John Hammond kid. I don't really know why he's in here. So if you scroll down, you can get a little bit more detail as to what's going on every single day inside of the advent of cyber. This showcases a really, really nice kind of breakdown of what's happening when, what you'll learn, and kind of a cool spotlight. Hey, some love for the sponsors and the people that help really make this happen. So kudos, give the credit where credit is due. And you can also, hey, maybe kind of zoom in as what is happening when for some of the special days that might be created by another individual, not just all Try Hack Me staff. I think I'm on day seven. I see the Cyber Mentor on day 14. Tiberius comes out just following that, there we go, on the 19th. And then Darkstar wraps it up as we get to day 24, just before Christmas. I mentioned we would take a look at the prizes, and you can see they are defined here in this paragraph. There will be a random winner every single day. Out of the pool of players that completed a single day's task, one will be chosen at random to be the winner and receive a prize. At the very end of the competition, every single participant, every single player that's completed that has participated in the advent of cyber, they'll be given a raffle ticket. And again, out of that entire pool, some random winners will be chosen. But the more tasks that you complete, the more raffle tickets that you get. So every question a user completes, the higher their chance is of winning. 
and these prizes are awesome. Take a look, the INE Cybersecurity Pass, the PWK course and the OSCP exam certification from Offensive Security, Proving Grounds vouchers, Security Plus certification, stuff from CompTIA, Try Hack Me subscriptions, Try Hack Me swag vouchers, the Windows Active Directory throwback course, and some awesome toys, Raspberry Pi here, some Hack 5 gadgets, and a total prize pool value of 13,377 US dollars. That's crazy cool. That's gonna be a lot of fun. The certificate looks super nice. You can take a look at that there. And of course, this is running until December 25th. The classic ground rules that you should familiarize yourself with. But hey, that is enough talk. Let's get to the real stuff. Let's finally kick this off and let's jump into the first task. Day one. December 1st, here we go. Okay, everybody, here we are. I am joined in on the room of Advent of Cyber 2, and we're going to get started with cybersecurity in 25 days, doing a new beginner-friendly security challenge every single day leading up until Christmas. So all of this kind of boilerplate stuff is everything that we have already talked about, and I don't want to beat the dead horse even more than I already have, uh, but you can see our, our mean mugs over there, and uh, all credit and kudos to the Try Hack Me team. So let's mark that we we have read all that because we have on the other page and that will mark task one complete. Now let's hop on over to task two, our socials. I'll slide down here. It looks like we could join the Discord community, follow Try Hack Me on Twitter, and join the subreddit. Um, we're going to be choosing a random winner every day, everything we've already discussed. And I'm in the Discord. I obviously already follow them on Twitter. I'm not yet in the subreddit because I'm not that cool. But let's check out task number three. These are, of course, some rules and a little tutorial here. Now, this is something that I really like because the thing with TryHackMe is that you have to connect to their VPN server, right? You've got to get into their virtual private network because... Try Hack Me has to have a network of all these virtual machines or computers and boxes and systems that you can beat up and hack, right, as part of Try Hack Me. But sometimes that can be kind of clunky and annoying because you have to have an open VPN client. Gimmick here, you don't always have to because with Try Hack Me's attack box, you can connect in your web browser. You don't need to have any specific environment or downloaded software or custom operating system and distribution. You can do it all in your browser with the attack box. And that's super neat. The attack box for a free user is available for one hour a day. And if you're subscribed, you can deploy it for an unlimited amount of time. But let's fire this up. If you scroll back to the very, very top of the room, you've got this start attack box option here. And it'll go ahead and start your machine. And then pretty soon, it'll just pop open over on the side of the screen. And it'll spin up this machine for you to use. Super handy, super nice. It takes a little bit of time for it to spin up. But that's okay. We'll use that opportunity to keep cruising through this boilerplate startup and everything. Uh, looks like we also discuss subscribing, being able to join the Try Hack Me community. And I'll probably t-shirt cannon some uh try hack me vouchers out in the in the in the chat so hit me up <laughs> the story here we go this is where i'm going to start to read a little bedtime story for you guys so i hope you guys are are still in your snugglies too and, and you're warm and cozy by the fire let me read this to you the christmas story after last year's shenanigans, where elf mcelferson and elf mcskitty were on damage control mode the entirety of december McSkitty vowed to never let that happen again. The previous Christmas period was extremely stressful, with the Christmas monster managing to compromise every system within Santa's corporate infrastructure to prevent Christmas from happening. Is Christmas still in danger this year? McSkitty showed great promise with the previous incident and was tasked with building up a security team within Santa's company, the Best Festival Company. Due to resistance from management, budgeting, and bureaucracy issues, McSkitty was only able to start building out her team from the 8th of November. Since then, she's only hired two team members, one security specialist, Elf McHacker, and one intern, Elf McEager. Now, it's the evening of the 30th November. McSkitty's team has been working hard to prevent any downtime and security incidents within the entire network and the application stack of the best festival company. 
McHacker suggested installing a VPN and only allowing access to the infrastructure via that VPN. After a long eight hour installation and deployment, McSkitty opens her monitoring dashboard and notices that no traffic is flowing to any of the applications. This was expected as no one had access to the VPN. Thank God, she said. Getting hacked again is not an option. Ring, 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 ring. Her elf hotline starts ringing and she jumps. Santa's schedule isn't working. I can't see anything, yells Elf Mick Assistant. Within a matter of seconds, hundreds of phone calls come in, and Elf McSkitty gets that sinking feeling in her stomach. She quickly dispatches Mick Hacker to analyze the VPN logs. He notices a payload that resembles a VPN authentication bypass that allows anyone to bypass the VPN. Did someone install the wrong version? With the poor state of security across the entire network, this unknown actor managed to access all applications and their underlying servers. Unlike last time, no one has claimed responsibility for this incident. Oh, here we go again, she sighs. It's up to you, Elf McEager, and the rest to save Christmas. Please take note, tasks are released daily. The Christmas story is used within some of the tasks, so please make sure you read the above. I painstakingly read all of that to you. <laughs> Let's move into day one, the real task here. All right, there's a lot here. We have a virtual machine we can deploy, so I can go ahead and deploy that. It takes, I think, about two minutes for it to spin up that virtual machine, but we can see our attack box has been spun up and created over on the right side of my screen here. All right, I'll zoom out a smidge so we can see our attack box smoothly, and let's go ahead and take a look at what we're doing for day one, a Christmas crisis. Now, the description of this task has a lot of text and there's a lot of reading, but I want to read it to you because this is all about learning. So bear with me, you can follow along, but let's get started. The description of this task reads, the best festival company's brand new open VPN server has been hacked and this is a crisis. The attacker has damaged various aspects of the company infrastructure, including using the Christmas Control Center to shut off the assembly line. It's only 24 days until Christmas, and that line has to be operational, or there won't be any presents. You have to hack your way back into Santa's account, blast that stinking hacker who changed the password, and get the assembly line back up and running again, or Christmas will be ruined. After giving you the assignment, McSkitty hands you the following dossier, and I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that right, so I'm going to call it a note. <laughs> the following note of important information for this task. Before reading, you press the big green deploy button to start the control center. And that's the deploy the virtual machine button, which we've done up here. And now we can read a little bit more. It says the web. The web, or the internet, is one of those things that everyone uses, but a few people bother to learn about and understand it. As hackers, it is vital that we understand what exactly the web is and how it works. When you open up your web browser and navigate to a website, it seems so simple, but what is really happening behind the scenes? First of all, your computer communicates with a known DNS, or Domain Name System. A DNS server, and that's used to find out where the website can be found on the internet. The DNS server will then return an IP address for the remote server. This can be used to go directly to the website. You can think of the internet as being quite like the planet itself. We have a lot of locations all over the world. All these places, they all still have a street address. And this is akin to the domain name of a website like tryhackme.com or google.com, but they all have coordinates, which can be used to pinpoint their location with absolute accuracy. The coordinates are like the IP address of a website. If you know the street address of a location, you can enter it into Google Maps and be given the exact coordinates, which can then be put into a sat nav and take you there with pinpoint accuracy. In the same way, your browser is given the address of a website, like tryhackme.com. It sends this address off to a DNS server, which tells it the coordinates, or the IP address, of the site. Your computer doesn't understand the original human-readable domain name, but it does understand what an IP address is. 
The IP can then be used to find the server across the internet, allowing your computer to request the content of the web page. Of course, in reality, this is a highly simplified analogy, so a more in-depth explanation can be found here, and that link will take you to another room. Then we'll read a little bit more about HTTPS. Once your computer knows where it can find the target website, it sends something called an HTTP or Hypertext Transfer Protocol request to the web server. Now this is just a standard network request, but it's formatted in a way that both your web browser and the server can understand. In practice, this means adding certain headers to the request, which identify it as an HTTP request and tell the server a variety of information about the request, as well as your own browser. Amongst many other headers, HTTP requests always have a method and a target. These specify what to retrieve from the server, the target, and how to retrieve it, the method. The method most commonly used to retrieve information is called the get method. When sending data to the server, it's more common to use a method called POST. For more information about HTTP requests, methods, and headers, check out the Web Fundamentals room, and that link will take you to another room. Once the content has been retrieved from the server, your browser reads the retrieved code and renders it as a web page. This usually means taking the layout of the page from an HTML document or hypertext markup language styling it with the connected CSS or cascading style sheet file, and then adding any dynamic content with one or more connected JavaScript files. HTTP has one inherent disadvantage. Namely, it is not secure. Anyone can see what you're requesting and what is being sent back to you. For this reason, HTTPS, or the Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure, protocol was invented. This works in exactly the same way as standard HTTP, but provides an encrypted connection, the functionality of which is beyond the level of this note and its explanation. Then we read a bit more about cookies. HTTP is inherently a stateless protocol. That means that no data persists between connections. Your computer could make two requests immediately after each other, and without relying on separate software, the web server would have no way to know that it was you making both those requests. This begs the important question. If HTTP is stateless, then how do we log into systems? The web server must have a way to identify that you have the right level of access, and it can hardly ask you to enter your password every time you request a new page. The answer is cookies. Tiny little pieces of information that get stored on your computer and get sent along the server along with every request that you make. Authentication, or session cookies, are used to identify you, and these will be very important in your mission today. The server receives your request with the attached cookie, and it checks the cookie to see what level of access you are allowed to have. It then returns a response appropriate to that level of access. For example, a standard user should be able to see, but not interact with, our control panel. But Santa, Santa should be able to access everything. Cookies are also often used for other purposes, such as advertising and storing user preferences, like a light or dark theme, for example. However, this will not be important in your task today. Any site can set cookies with the variety of properties. The most important of these for today's tasks are the name and the value of the cookies, both of which will always be set. It's worth noting that a site can only access cookies that are associated with its own domain. In other words, Google.com can't access any cookies stored by TryHackMe.com, and vice versa. It's important to note that cookies are stored locally on your computer. That means that they are under your control. You can edit, add, or delete them as you wish. There are a few ways to do this. However, it's most commonly done by using your browser developer tools. 
and developer tools can be accessed in most browsers by pressing F12 on your keyboard, or the key combination, Control, Shift, and I. With the developer tools open, navigate to the Storage tab in Firefox or the Application tab in Chrome or Edge, and select the Cookies menu on the left-hand side of the console. In the above image, you can see a test cookie for a website. The important attributes name and value are shown. The name of a cookie is used to identify it to the server. The value of the cookie is the data stored by the server. In this example, the server would be looking for a cookie called cookie name. It would then retrieve the value, cookie value, from this cookie. These values can be edited by double clicking on them which is great if you can edit a session or an authorization cookie because this could potentially lead to an escalation of privileges, assuming you have access to the administrator's authorization cookie. All right, that was a lot of talk. Having read the lengthy note, you get ready to hack your way into Santa's Christmas Control Center. You enter the IP address at the top of the screen into your browser search bar and press enter to load the page. Remember that machines can take up to five minutes to boot up fully. And it looks like we have our attack box already deployed and the task machine, that green button when we deployed it earlier, we can open Firefox on the attack box and copy and paste the machine's IP address into the browser search bar. So at the very, very top of this task, when we hit that deploy button, it created a new virtual machine that's visible up top. So I can see the Christmas crisis task has a machine spawned with this IP address. I could copy that and I could add a little bit more time so I could use it in the network environment or I can stop the machine. In this case, I wanna go interact with it within the attack box. So I will take note of this IP address and I will go open up Firefox in my attack box. Once the attack box is open, I'll navigate to that address bar as it suggested, and I'll type in that IP address, 10.10.13.104, with periods separating each of those. And I'm greeted with this Christmas control center, and I have a username and password prompt. I'll zoom in a bit here. Now let's go back to the tasks and see what I should do next. We can hit the completed button on deploying all the machines. It says register for an account and then log in. Okay, so my username can be John and I'll set my password to super secure subscribe. Now I can hit log in. Oh, duh, I need to register an account. I can't log in just yet. That's kind of what that said. So password subscribe and I will register. There we go, it created an account for me. So I can now log in with John and subscribe. Now I can log in, there we go. Okay, now I have a view console and I can see all of the active settings on the controls of this thing. Everything is currently turned off, but I must need to do some cookie manipulation. And we can do that with what we've just learned about opening the developer tools. Following the instructions in the task prompt and description, I know that I can open my browser's developer tools by pressing F12 on my keyboard. So I'll press that, and now I know that I need to navigate to the storage tab because I'm in Firefox as my web browser. So alongside inspector, console, debugger, network, and style editor, I don't see storage here, but it's hidden behind this little arrow. So I can click on that, and select storage, and that will open up the storage prompt here for me. Now, I know there's not a whole lot of room for me to showcase this, so I'm gonna drag this up a little bit and drag this down. So you might be able to see under this cookies section that I'm in currently, and the web browser IP address, 10.10.13.104, for this specific server we've deployed, I can see that there is a cookie being created with the name auth. I also see a value here, 7B22636FD6D70 dot dot dot. And I can't make a whole lot of sense of that. Auth just seems like random numbers and letters to me right now. But if I were to double click on this, 
I might be able to learn a little bit more about it. Um, I'll have to drag this down for my view and, and make it so that I can access the rest of these values. But if I double click on this, as it said, I could just simply edit this name to be anything I want. I know that it should have the value auth because that is what the server is going to be looking for. Remember, it needs to know the name of the cookie for the server to be able to actually identify because that's what the server wants to read. So down below, when it asked in that prompt, what is the name of the cookie used for authentication? We know that it's called auth or A-U-T-H. Now I can hit submit there. And now I have this value. This other question that's asking, in what format is the value of this cookie encoded? Uh, I don't really know about that one. I see all these numbers and letters, but if I double click on it and I drag my cursor, there's a lot there. There's a lot more data to it, and I'm not exactly positive was it what it all is. One of the great things about Try Hack Me, though, again, this is all about learning. It's all about your education. So if you're stuck, if you just don't know something, Try Hack Me will willingly give you some of the answers and solutions and write-ups to walk you through a specific process. Or you can take a hint and there's no penalty. There's nothing wrong. There's no shame in taking a hint. If you click on this hint button here, it tells me, oh, this is often used as a shorthand for binary. Hmm. Well, binary, that means zeros and ones. And us as people, we, we count in base 10 when binary is base 2. So 0 and 1 are the characters for binary, but when we talk about counting with base 10, we go from 0 to 9 and then start over again adding another kind of decimal place, right, or, or another digit. So this must be referring to a different base other than base 2 or base 10. I see all these numbers 7, 2, 3, 6, 0, 1, etc, etc. So we're covering 0 through 9, but I also see the letters A, B, C, D, E, and F. Now that brings me up to 0 to 9 and then I go to 15. So including the zero, we have 16 numbers or 16 different characters we can use to represent data. That isn't base two for binary. It isn't base 10 for decimal, but it's base 16 for hexadecimal. And hexadecimal is one really cool, another representation, right, of all the data and the numbers that we're talking about. So that's the answer that this question is looking for. It wants me to type in hexadecimal. I can submit that there, and that's correct. Okay, having decoded the cookie, what format is the data stored in? Well, what do you mean, decode the cookie? I have this value here that's just a some base 16 or hexadecimal value, but I don't know what you mean to, by decoding it. Let's take a look at that other hint. It says, ooh, use CyberChef to decode the cookie. The format is a very common one, often linked to JavaScript. Okay, and there's a link there and it's using recipe from hex. Um, so if I copy this value that we have and I see in my bookmarks for the attack box browser, I could open up another tab and open CyberChef. And CyberChef is gonna be really, really helpful for maybe experimenting with other representations of data. Over in this input tab, I could just simply paste in that big long base 16 string. But when I say base 16 and I call it hexadecimal, it's hex. So I wanna convert that into a different format that I might be able to read and understand because it's just a representation with these numbers and symbols, but in a different format, like maybe understanding the ASCII representation or how, we, how, we, how computers understand that in their numbers sense, how do we bring that to letters in English character sent? Let's use that from hex operation. So I can click on that and drag it into the recipe pane here in the middle. There we go. I see down below, and my face is kind of in the way, I'll, I'll move that real quick. You can see that the company is the best festival company. Ooh, that's exactly what we're talking about here. And the username is John, or 
just what I typed in as my user. Okay, so this curly brace here in these string notations with kind of these, these double quotes, that's creating what looks like a JavaScript object and written out in this format with kind of opening and closing curly braces with a sort of a key being set to a specific value, that is the JavaScript object notation or the JSON or JSON. And you can type that in here. That answer here is JSON, JSON, the JavaScript object notation. Let's hit enter on that and that is the correct answer. So. Now we want to figure out how to bypass the authentication. We want to know what is the value of Santa's cookie? Well, when we were interacting with this page earlier, we could like log out maybe and try to log in as Santa, but we don't know his password. We could try, okay, Santa Claus or subscribe again, but nope, that is the invalid username or password. So. Maybe we need a specific cookie that we could forge or kind of manipulate because we understand how the cookie is built now. All it takes is the username. So could we maybe craft our own cookie where I change the name John to Santa? Let's do that. I'll copy and paste everything that's in this output here and I'll actually move that into the input pane. But first I wanna remove this from hex operation because we're gonna actually can take what this value is currently and then convert it back to hex. But we'll do that after we've manipulated this username here. We'll make that Santa, right? Because then when the web server examines this cookie, that auth cookie, it'll see the username is Santa and it'll think that we are that user it will authenticate us as Santa. That's what we wanna do here. So let's use that two hex operation in CyberChef. Now you can see it created a lot of output with spaces here, but the cookie didn't have spaces in that. So let's change the delimiter. The delimiter here is currently set to a space, but I'll bring that down to none. Now I have that big long hexadecimal string and I can copy that and go change the current user by simply modifying this cookie. Back in our web browser, back to the application, I'll once again hit F12 on my keyboard, get into cookies here, and because I logged out, there aren't currently any cookies present. So I guess we could try and add one of our own, but will it behave, will it work? I guess it's worth a try. If not, we can always go kind of modify one that we have the web server created for us. So the name we know needs to be auth, and I'll type that in, and then the value needs to be that big long hexadecimal string that we got from CyberChef. Great. Now, if I go down and refresh this page, ooh, looks like I'm logged in without even entering a username and password. That's awesome. That's what we wanted to do. And of course, now we know the value of Santa's cookie. So let's copy this value and go paste it in here. Oh, I can't really paste it because it's, it's inside the context of the attack box. So let's go use this little panel browser here and let's click on that clipboard icon so I can see this value for real. Now I can drag it to my real machine rather than operating through the browser. So I'll paste that in and hit submit and that's correct. There we go. And now I'll go back to the Christmas console. I need to go enable all these parts of the assembly line. So I'll turn my face off again real quick and I will turn this part picking to yes, assembly to yes, painting to yes, touch up yes, sorting yes, slay yes, and there we go. Now at the very, very bottom, I see this weird funky string. But that format THM stands for try hack me. And these curly braces, that indicates a flag or a special string or key that I can use to submit to prove that I've completed this task. I'll copy this. Once again, try and bring it over, but I can't. I'm gonna have to maneuver it with the clipboard here. Now I can copy and paste this. Submit, and there we go. Congrats, we completed that task. Oh boy, all right. Well, hey, that was awesome. That was 
the first task, day one, December 1st for the advent of Cyber 2. And man, oh man, I am super duper excited. I think we're gonna have a lot of fun with this advent of Cyber Room. I'm really excited. I hope you guys enjoy my task day seven. I know the Cyber Mentor is going to be incredible. I know Tiberius is going to be great. Dark Star is going to be great. All of these rooms, not even just the special, all of these are going to be a ton of fun and absolute blast. I hope to showcase some of these in some videos for you, but I hope you had fun with me, you know, goofing off and in, in this little get up here. But uh, please, please, please come hang out, come play, come participate in the Discord chat on Twitter, share what you're working through on the advent of Cyber 2, and I'll see you online. Tryhackme.com slash Christmas. Take care. I'll see you in the next video, everybody.